Hello everybody, my name is Shortline 614 and welcome to this completely unscripted video where I attempt to speculate what the system map of Southern Pacific Santa Fe would have looked like if that merger would have gone through. Now, I really like rarid maps, I collect rarid maps, I talk about rarid maps on my YouTube channel, and I also make rarid maps, and this is my most recent map. It is unfinished, but it is of the Southern Pacific Santa Fe Railway what I think it would look like in modern day. Now, of course, the Southern Pacific Santa Fe merger is rather infamous within rare history circles for many, many reasons. I highly recommend you go read up on that before you watch this video if you do not know. If you do know about it, well, let's continue. So, this is what I think it would look like in the modern day, and I am quite happy with it. And let's go into some of my mapping philosophy and how I came to Determine what lines I would include in the map, what lines I did not include in the map. Now, first of all, uh, lines that SPSF own are in red, while the trackage rights that SPSF has are in pink. So, the philosophy. I started out by looking at maps of both BNSF and Union Pacific. And if uh, BNSF retained a line from the Santa Fe, I would keep it in the map. If UP retained a line from the Southern Pacific, I would keep it in the map. And that gave me a nice base to kind of go off of and then start to fiddle with things. I then started looking around at uh, SPSF's various operating plans, what information that I could find to see if that there was any lines that they planned to sell or, or retain that maybe were sold in real life or, or you know, were abandoned in real life. And the first thing that I found involved the Parker branch, the Santa Fe Parker branch. This rail line over here, my cursor is, you know, this is the Parker branch where my cursor is, and SPSF planned to retain this. I actually found this out in Fred Fraley's book on um, Santa Fe. Now, why did they plan to retain the Parker branch? This line has been sold in real life to the, I think, the Arizona and California Railroad. Well, as a general rule when it comes to SPSF, the Santa Fe side would mostly be intermodal high-value merchandise, while the Southern Pacific side would be mostly low-value merchandise and bulk traffic. Now, traffic coming to and from Northern California and the Sunset Route, this low-value merchandise and bulk traffic, if it stayed on the Southern Pacific routing, it would have to go through Southern California, specifically traverse uh, Beaumont and Cajon Hills here in Southern California. Now, that would have posed an issue as it did in real life because it was very costly due to the helper districts and, and whatnot, and it was kind of a kind of sort of a roundabout way. So what SPSF planned to do they plan to route this traffic via the Parker branch and the Arizona or the Phoenix branch. So that's why I have this line retained as a part of SPSF, even though it was sold in real life. Another line that I kind of went back and forth on on whether or not SPSF would retain it would be the Golden State route between El Paso and Kansas City. Now, in actual SPSF merger plans, the, the Golden State route would mostly be a, a, a low... A low value merchandise bulk traffic line not really seeing that many trains it was actually a major sticking point uh during the spsf merger between uh, sp and atsf that sp had spent a lot of money buying this off the rock island and spending a lot of money actually fixing it up i think the january or no the march 1981 issue of trains magazine has a really good article on it that that issue is just amazing in general and i, I highly recommend you read it so I kind of went back and forth on whether or not they would retain it long term, considering you have the the Belen cutoff of, of the Santa Fe, which is which is a, a much better route. And I decided to keep it in my map. Um, I went back and forth. At one point, I considered making it kind of a Montana Rail Link style regional, where where SPSF still has they still send traffic over it. And they have haulage rights, but they don't exactly own it. And then I went back to them just owning it outright. Mostly because I think it would, you know, selling this line would probably be kind of a, uh, it's more of a defensive measure against any potential rare kind of encroaching on the SPSF monopoly in this region, and it would see some traffic. So that's, that's why I kept it. I also mapped lines that I think uh, SPSF would be likely to acquire in the intermediate years. Now, the big one, and the only one that I really mapped, was the... Chicago, Missouri, and Western, Chicago, and Alton that you see here between Chicago, St. Louis, and Kansas City. Now, historically, this was the Chicago and Alton in part of the Gulf of Leon, Ohio, Illinois Central Gulf. And during the 1980s, I think during 1986, it was sold to the Chicago, Missouri, and Western, which was a startup regional. Now, the Chicago, Missouri, and Western pretty much immediately went bankrupt, and it was split up. 
the Chicago to St. Louis line would become a part of Southern Pacific, while the Springfield-St. Louis-Kansas City line became the Gateway Western and is now known as the Springfield line. And of course, Canadian National tried to go after the Springfield line and they completely failed on that. I've covered that elsewhere. But this is the same line. But the Gateway Western itself was actually heavily backed by the Santa Fe. Uh, they used it as, a, as an outlet to St. Louis. They never officially owned it. It was just kind of a very close relationship. So I think when the Chicago, Missouri, and Western would go under, SPSF would be rather quick to acquire this line so they could have their own uh, their own specifically Chicago to St. Louis line and their own Chicago uh, secondary Chicago to Kansas City line kind of as a relief valve for the for the Santa Fe. Now, there were some other lines, other trackage rights that I have mapped because the one of the facts, one of the reasons, in my opinion, why the SPSF merger was denied is because SPSF, they refused to concede any trackage or any trackage rights to other rares the first time around. Second time they tried to get the merger approved, they actually... And I, I found this out in digging through old issues of Pacific Rail News. Fortunately, the archive for that is now down, so I can't go back to it. But they struck a deal with Union Pacific, and they struck a deal with the Rio Grande. The deal that they struck with the Rio Grande is that they would lease Central Pacific slash Donner Pass line from Ogden to Roseville, and also the Modoc line up to Kalamath Falls. And they would give trackage rights to the Rio Grande up to Portland, down into the San Francisco area, and then down through the through the San Joaquin Valley to Bakersfield to, or Barstow. One of those two, I can't exactly remember. So that's what they would hand over to the Rio Grande. Now, what about Union Pacific? Union Pacific is more interesting because they were going to get trackage rights from El Paso to tie in with their Texas and Pacific line across the Sunset Route, including over the, the um, Phoenix branch, up through Southern California to Colton, and then up through the San Joaquin Valley all the way to Stockton. And they would get the rights to serve all the industries along this line and provide some sort of competition to SPSF. Now, SPSF wanted stuff in return. In return, they would get trackage rights. Sierra Blanca, Texas, off the Sunset Route, all the way to Big Sandy, Texas, and tie in with the Cotton Belt. Now, this would cut travel time across Texas dramatically. I think the travel time compared over the Texas and Pacific compared to the, uh, the Texas and New Orleans is about five hours difference. And of course, they would also get uh, be able to use as BNSF. They have these rights between Dallas, Fort Worth, and I think Sweetwater or Abilene. I can never remember the, the the name of that town. I always confuse them. They have these rights in real life, and that cuts back travel time for traffic going from Dallas, Fort Worth onto the uh, onto the Southern Transcon, so they don't have to go all the way through Temple. So this line would actually probably see more SPSF trains than UP trains in this in this scenario, which I find particularly. And the final. Session, you, you saw it up here before, was trackage rights over the former Chicago and Eastern Illinois, still over Union Pacific between Chicago and, and, and St. Louis. Now, of course, at the time the merger would happen, you know, they wouldn't have bought the Chicago, Missouri, and Western yet. So this would be their only line for a while. And it probably, these trackage rights probably wouldn't see that many trains after the acquisition of Chicago, Missouri, and Western. It'd probably be a relief valve or for more lower density traffic. So yes, that is the SPSF map. As I said, it's still very much a work in progress. It's currently unlabeled. There's no labels on it whatsoever. I will put a work in progress version, uh, a link to it in the description if you want to look at it yourself. So how do you think I did? Uh, do you think I did well? Do you, how do you like the map? Is there any information that I can that I can add to the map? I do have future ideas for this map, including a, an even more uh, alternate history map with, uh, with various other rail lines added and whatnot. And, I don't know how long that's going to be until that's made. But, um, yeah, I, I, I am going to do one thing that I don't really do all that much, which is I have a Discord server linked in the description if you want to join that, if you want updates on this map and possibly join the discussion. Of course, there's always the comment section as well. And anyways, thank you for watching this video, and I will see you all in the next one. So goodbye, everybody.